This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. If you're a Catholic, or maybe you're not a Catholic but are familiar with what the church actually teaches about the Blessed Virgin Mary, and not just what, like, say, anti-Catholics say about, say that we believe, but what we actually believe, then you know that we profess that Our Lady, the Virgin Mary, was made our mother in the church from the cross when the blessed disciple, St. John, who is the stand-in for the faithful believer and for every Christian, and when Jesus told him, Behold your mother, that was an instruction not just for St. John, but for all of us, and that she is our mother, that she has many things for us, many things, but she is not, isn't our sister. That should be easy to understand for any Catholic. We get confused teaching from Rome on everything imaginable, including now Catholicism 101 stuff, like Our Lady being our mother. And of course, this confusion comes from Rome itself, from Pope Francis. Headline from Info Vaticana. The Pope invites us to see Mary, quote, a sister who precedes us. In the Angelus of this Sunday, August 15th, Solemnity of the Assumption, the Pope invites us to see in Mary, quote, a sister who precedes us on our journey to meet the Lord in heaven. Now some will say, come on, this is petty. I have to correct every single thing. I wouldn't be talking about this today. If a publicly known European priest who is a theologian didn't write a blistering letter rebuking Pope Francis for this. And I will give you his article on this as a response for some context. Our Lady is the mother of the church. She is our mother on an individual level, as decreed by our blessed Lord on the cross. And she does all things in perfection. And that is one of the reasons she is a model for us. But she is much more than a model for us. She is also an intercessor to our blessed Lord. There's one mediator between man and the Father, and that is our blessed Lord Jesus Christ. But she is an intercessor for us with him. For non-Catholics, this is confusing. But to understand it, you must understand the nature of the communion of saints. But here, at the most basic level, Our Lady leads us to our Lord, as a mother will lead anyone to her Son. Some saints say that you cannot know our Lord without knowing Our Lady. I know it's a teaching that many will find very hard to accept. Here's what Francis had to say on this. Quote, We must not imagine Mary as a motionless wax statue, but in her we can see a sister with worn-out sandals and so tired, having walked behind the Lord, and to meet her brothers and sisters, then concluding her journey in the glory of heaven, said the Pope at the Angelus of the Solemnity of the Assumption. The Virgin, His Holiness continued, is, quote, she who precedes us on the journey, reminding us all that our life is also a journey, a continuous journey towards the horizon of the definitive encounter. He also urged us to pray so that the Virgin, quote, helps us go on this journey towards the definitive encounter with the Lord, end quote. If he had said that stuff about any other saint, again, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. He's saying this about the Virgin Mary. And I'll remind you that elsewhere, Pope Francis had said that there were times when Our Lady would have accused the Lord of lying to her about Our Lord, about His sanctity and His claim of being the Messiah and all the rest. Pope Francis has a theological problem, to put it mildly. I think that goes without saying at this point, given the number of times theologians, both consecrated and ordained or not, have had to correct him on basic Catholicism stuff. Now, that article came from Info Vaticana. They're not exactly a news outlet that takes papal quotes out of context, tries to get gotchas with Pope Francis. In fact, quite the contrary. They have often chastised traditional Catholics as being schismatic and heretical. Yes, apparently being heretics for wanting this faith the way it was always taught until a few decades ago. So they're not one to try to get gotchas on Pope Francis, which is why we start with them. Now they reference, that article goes on to reference the rebuke Francis got from this bishop, or this priest rather, who's a theologian. 
And they give a small quote from him, but I'm actually going to turn to him and give him his full due because he gives you the basic Catholic teaching on this and why this is so erroneous. So we turn to Infocato Catholica with this simple headline. Mary is not a sister. Posted the same day. On the 15th of August, the Feast of the Assumption of this year. The priest is a theologian, a philosopher, and a moralist. He is an educator. So you'll probably find this very easy to grasp, even if this was written in another language initially, because he's an educator. So he understands the need to convey these important ideas in a way that people can understand. And in some way, this is, he makes this priest the ideal candidate to correct Pope Francis on this. So here is the priest. Quote, this is what the Holy Father said on the solemnity of the Assumption of Our Lady. Mary is a sister who precedes us on our journey to meet the Lord in heaven. And so that the specific, the poetic note, so dear and specific area of the post-conciliar church is not missing, he speaks to us of his worn sandals from her long journey and hard journey. The whole thing may look very cute and very pretty for certain modern tastes, but it is pure poetry, honestly, and it doesn't go any further. Or it does, as we will see, because all of this is quite a challenge. On the other hand, there is no, no need for so much poetry that it very easily approaches and becomes a real nonsense without head or tail. Mary cannot be reduced from being our mother, to being the mother of God, to being our sister. Not at all. The authoritative and eminent author's intention may be excellent and purely good. I do not doubt it. Indeed, I assume it is. But it necessarily collides with revelation, with the direct words of Jesus Christ on the cross. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. In fact, I don't think that since then and in the Catholic Church, anyone has dared to call her in this way sister, which is foreign to the faith and piety of the people of God, and very hard to swallow, too. As no one would think of calling their mother sister. The faith of the Church, and in her and with her the faith of all her children, have sung, proclaimed, and venerated the Virgin Mary as Mother of God and our Mother. And from here on, Mother of the Church, Mother of Confessors, Mother of Virgins, and an endless number of pious creedings, but never, as far as I can remember, as Sister. Surely for the Holy Father Francis it will have a very special and dear meaning, but he has forgotten to share it, and it really is missing. On the other hand, and since we are on the subject, the Virgin Mary tells us that she cannot precede us in the path of following Christ to heaven. For a very specific and very decisive reason, the Virgin Mary, full of grace, the one to whom it is announced, the Lord is with you, does not follow the path of following Christ. She is sanctified, she is in God, full of God from the one second of her existence, but she but she did not even have to wait for the use of reason to live and experience it. It was granted to her at the very moment of her immaculate conception. Besides, no mother follows her children. It is rather the other way around. Children learn and obey their mothers. In fact, we are told by St. Luke that the child Jesus was subject to them, referring to his relationship with Joseph and Mary, his parents on earth, in front of all of his countrymen and acquaintances. This is normal and logical. The Virgin Mary, mother of the Lord Jesus, does not follow her son. She gives birth to him, accompanies him throughout his life, and will not fail him either on the way of the cross or at the foot of the cross, co-redeeming with him. His life in God and with his Son has nothing in common with ours. Via Torres with a fallen nature damaged by original sin, and by the effects of personal and other people's sins. Nothing to do with Maria's status. She accompanies us at all times. She is always with us, just like her Son. Her intercession, her mediation, and her mercy will never fail us, and even less so in the worst moments or circumstances of our life. But by not being a Viator, not by not being a pilgrim, by not being exiled in this valley of tears, she neither follows Christ, as we must do, if we want to be saved, nor does she precede us, therefore. Of Jesus Christ, we can say that he is our brother, the firstborn among us all. And we can say this precisely in relation to Mary, his common mother, and each one of us. Since Pope Francis has not spoken ex cathedra, nor has he claimed to be, claimed to be used, invoking the magisterium, I have allowed myself the freedom from my condition as a son of God, a son of Mary, and a son of the Church, governed by Peter, to propose and publish these considerations, in the light of the doctrine and faith of the Church, of which the Holy Father is its first and most faithful servant. P.S. To clarify the meaning of sister and mother in reference to the Blessed Virgin Mary. To begin with, no treatise on Mariology bothers to comment on the subject of sister, as far as I can remember. The subject of Mother of God and Our Mother is discussed for pages and pages. End quote. We could go on, but I think he covers it there. There were some translation issues, we'll say. Again, I used the translation extension for this, but you get the idea. There are certain, you know, pronoun issues and things there that I corrected along the way. But beyond that, 
Those are his words. And what do you say? <laughs> it sounds like Catholicism 101 stuff, except for maybe the Catholics who don't understand that the church has always said that the Virgin Mary was the co-redemptrix through her nonviolent suffering while her son was enduring her his passion and his crucifixion. But that's it. It's, it's an emphasis that has gone away until very recently. I'm seeing more and more co-redemptrix talk from theologians and others outside of the traditional world, which is kind of refreshing, actually. But beyond that, the church has always taught that. And she's and it's, the church has always taught that she's our mother, not our sister. That, yes, she did follow Christ in a very literal sense and took everything he said to her heart. But she was spared the stains of original sin. She was going to do that, follow her son naturally, because he is God. And she recognized that immediately. After all, she gave her fiat. I'm curious what you have to say about this. Are you surprised that Pope Francis would play fast and loose with this kind of thing? I think this is just more synodal nonsense and him speaking off the cuff. Let me know what you think about this in the comments, please. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It certainly helps. So does sharing this on social media. That helps too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.